Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. Today, I'm going to be answering the question that I have gotten many times over the years. I've never made a video on it. I'm probably going to put this lesson on my crash courses. If you're struggling to learn, check out the link below. I will help you learn your camera super fast. So the question is in regards to how is depth of field different than sharpness? There's a lot that interrelates, but they're not the same thing. To summarize, depth of field deals with the area that is in focus. It's usually described in terms of depth, a deep or a shallow depth of field. The three major things that control depth of field are your aperture, is that when you close your aperture down and it gets smaller, you get a deeper depth of field. As you back up and get further away from your subject, you get a deeper depth of field. And as you use wide angle lenses, you get a deeper depth of field. Those are the three most important things. I don't want to get into the sensor discussion, but sensor format also comes into play in terms of how, how big the sensor is, but we're going to avoid that discussion for now. All you need to know is that the three major things that control the depth of field deal with the area that should be in focus. So we're going to set that aside. Sharpness deals with two other specific factors. The first of which is referred to as micro contrast. The second is the finest detail. Micro contrast has to do with how well an image defines the differences in shade when they're right next to each other. So something that is very good at micro contrast, you would be able to see very minute color differences when we're looking at edges. Instead of seeing a blurry edge, you're going to see something a little bit sharper. When we're talking about detail, we're talking about how small that, that image can be perceived in the image. So there's this micro contrast and there's detail. And when you combine those two things together in a high degree, you get sharpness. So now that we know what depth of field is, and now we know what sharpness is, I want to give a few guidelines in terms of how depth of field and sharpness interact when we're talking about changing your aperture. In the beginning, the vast majority of beginners, when they get a very wide aperture lens, we're talking about 2.8 or wider, there is a huge temptation to shoot with that aperture wide open. Why? Because it's going to give us a nice blurry background and if we're shooting portraits and we want to get artistic, we want almost what this painted background look, I get it. There is a problem with shooting wide open. When we open the lens very, very wide, the lens is not at its sharpest. And as you stop that aperture down, when you get down to f4, 5.6, and really around f8, most lenses get super sharp. And I have to put a little asterisk there, come back to this in a second. Another question I get is about group photos, is how can I get the focus square on multiple people's faces? Most cameras cannot focus in two different places at the same time with autofocus. So that question is really asking, what should my depth of field be? What should my aperture be? For group photos, depending on how many rows of people, you are going to want a depth of field deep enough to get everybody in the image. So it would be a mistake to shoot at 2.8 or 1.4. Maybe it would be a better idea to shoot that group photo at 7.1 or F8 or F9 to get a depth of field deep enough to get everybody in the picture. Now, I have to warn you, there is going to be a huge temptation to continue to stop your aperture down to f22. What happens is that as you use smaller and smaller apertures, we run into another problem referred to as diffraction. Diffraction essentially means is that when we get small, small apertures, the image starts to lose sharpness again. You can get a deeper depth of field, it just won't be as sharp as it was at f8. So with that in mind, those are some general definitions about the difference between depth of field versus sharpness and some of the general rules when we're shooting wide open versus f8 versus f22. Diffraction is, is going to be a little bit harder to see, you know, at f11. It depends on the camera that you're using. The lens always behaves the same. What's happening with the Canon 90D and the Canon M6 Mark II is we've got all these megapixels crammed into a very small sensor. And instead of running to these diffraction problems that we see, you know, like at F8 or F9, we see it in wider apertures. So the lenses are starting to get more diffraction at around F5.2. 
So that's a completely different discussion. Uh, there's a reason for this. I would love to explain it to you. It's probably a little bit too much information for this video, but if you'd like to know the reason, I will cover it in a future video. In any event, if you're struggling to learn your camera, check out one of my many crash courses. I'll put the links in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.